टाइगर इन द जू बाय लेस्ली नॉरिस लेट अस फर्स्ट रीड द पोएम ही स्टॉक्स इन हिज विविड स्ट्राइप्स द फ्यू स्टेप्स ऑफ हिज केज ऑन पैड्स ऑफ वेलवेट क्वाइट इन हिज क्वाइट रेस ही शुड बी लर्किंग इन शेडो स्लाइडिंग थ्रू लॉन्ग ग्रास near the water hole we are plump deer pass he should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge baring his white fangs his claws terrorizing the villages but he is locked in a concrete cell his strength behind bars stalking the length of his cage ignoring visitors he hears the last voice at night the patrolling cars and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars i begin this video with some simple questions what is freedom are you free do you enjoy your freedom what would happen if you are not free what is captivity Why do we keep animals in cages? Is it cruelty to the animals? My dear students, freedom means the power to act, speak or think as one wants. Freedom generally is having the ability to act or change without being checked. And captivity captivity means taken and held as a prisoner means you don't have power to act on your own conscience the irony is that you are being provided with food clothes and medicine in your captivity you are not allowed to even die so you survive in the captivity but your captor doesn't let you to enjoy your freedom I welcome you to this poem A Tiger in the Zoo written by Leslie Norris The poem will make us feel the contrast between freedom and captivity This contrast has been presented through the feelings of an imprisoned tiger The poem also highlights the problem of animal cruelty we know that animal cruelty is rampant people have no sympathy for animals the poem arouses our sympathetic sense towards a tiger the poet has tried to show how a tiger lacks its interest in his life when he is caged Let us understand the meaning of this poem stanza wise. Before reading this poem, focus on two important points. First, the behavior of tiger inside the zoo and second, the behavior of tiger in the forest when he is free. The poet has shown the life of a caged tiger and at the same time he visualizes imagines its life in the forest when he is free the poem moves from the zoo to the forest and back again to the zoo see this video attentively and say which stanzas speak about the tiger in the zoo and which ones speak about the tiger in the forest So now come to the poem stanza wise He stalks in his vivid stripes the few steps of his cage on pads of velvet quiet in his quiet race let us see the meaning of difficult words zoo is a popular word which means a facility with usually indoor and outdoor setting where living typically 
wild animals are kept specially for public exhibition the second word is stocks stocks means to walk stealthily next vivid it means bright colored pads paws of tiger rays means anger we see that here the tiger is in the zoo locked in a cage his skin is bright and he walks to and fro in the cage he is walking continuously and restlessly this shows that he is not happy the tiger is able to walk only few steps in one direction because the cage is small it is not easy to walk freely inside the cage the tiger's walk doesn't make any sound because he has very soft feet but he is angry because he has to walk in the limited area of his cage he is angry because he is not free let us see the meaning of second stanza the second stanza reads he should be lurking in shadow sliding through long grass near the water hole where plump dear pass let us talk about difficult words used in this stanza two words are there lurking means to lie hidden waiting for prey and plump means fat and healthy the meaning of this stanza is like this in in this stanza poet visualizes he thinks he imagines tiger in the forest here the tiger is not in the cage the poet says that if this tiger was free he could be hiding in the long grass near the water bodies to hunt deer the poet tells us that actual life of a tiger is to live in the forest where he could hunt freely for his food but the tiger in the cage cannot live a natural life now see next stanza stanza 3 reads like this he should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge bearing his white fangs his claws terrorizing the villages difficult words in this stanza first snarling it is warning sound made by animals another word bearing this means uncovered open and fangs means sharp tooth of animals the meaning of this stanza is like this in this stanza also the poet visualizes tiger in the forest means in this stanza the tiger is still in the forest but in the imagination of the poet according to the poet if the tiger was free he could have been snarling around the houses located at the outskirts of the forest he would terrorize people with his sharp tooth and claws the villagers would have been in constant fear by just hearing the snarling sound of the tiger here also the poet wants to say that a tiger in the forest will not be in fear from anybody but the condition is he should be in the forest let us come to the next stanza this stanza reads but he is locked in a concrete cell his strength behind bars stalking the length of his cage ignoring visitors the difficult words 
in this stanza cell cell means a small room in a prison another one ignore this means to refuse to take notice of the meaning of this stanza is in this stanza the poet comes to the reality means now the tiger is in the case and what is reality here the reality is that the tiger is not free as i have told you he is inside a case the tiger is kept in a strong cell which is made of concrete he is behind bars so he cannot use his strength his all strength is useless behind the bars he knew this so he never tries to terrorize the visitors he know that would be useless his power is restricted inside the case he simply ignores the visitors now come to the next stanza this stanza reads he hears the last voice at night the patrolling cars and he stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars let us talk about difficult words used in this stanza patrolling here this word means to guard stare means to look fixedly with wide open eyes the meaning of this stanza in this stanza or i should say in this last stanza the tiger is still in the case this stanza describes the night time activities of the tiger so the time is night the poet says that the tiger hears the sounds of the patrolling cars which are used by the security personnel to guard the zoo the tiger also stares or look constantly at the shining stars with his beautiful eyes the tiger is sad in the case he is not free to live his life he just looks at the stars feels helpless in coming out of his confinement now let us talk about summary or main points of this poem a tiger is caged and kept imprisoned he walks in his small cage to and fro his condition is poor as he is unable to roam freely in the forest a free tiger would have been hunting in the forest he would be a symbol of fear among the villagers a tiger is helpless behind the bars he is all alone in the night and hears only the sound of the patrolling cars he looks at the stars constantly as he feels total helplessness a tiger in the zoo shows inhuman behavior towards animals we humans don't want to coexist with animals who also have right to live we keep animals in the zoo for our entertainment sometimes they are kept in the zoo to save them from human beings we will talk about literary devices which are used in this poem The poet Leslie Norris has used several literary devices in this poem. The first one is rhyming scheme. Each stanza of this poem has A B C B rhyming scheme. Next, personification. It is making non-human beings to behave like human beings. Here the tiger has been personified as the poet refers him as he next metaphor it is a figure of speech that directly refers to one thing by mentioning another here the 
tiger paws has been compared with velvet on pads of velvet quite next consonants it is a repetition of consonant sound in close proximity example use of s sound in the poem he stalks in his vivid stripes another one he should be lurking in shadow and his strength behind bars next assonance it is repetition of vowel sounds in close proximity we can see the use of i in these lines he stalks in his vivid stripes another line bearing his white fangs his claws next and stares with his brilliant eyes here we can see a very nice use of i in these lines this is assonance next enjambment it takes place when the same sentence continued to the next line without any punctuation mark you can see in the poem that these lines have no punctuation marks he stalks in his vivid stripes and the line changes without without exclamation marks he stalks in his vivid stripes the few steps of his case next sliding through long grass near the water hole where plump deer pass these three lines are actually one sentence so this is enjambment another example is he should be snarling around houses at the jungles is next oxymoron it is the use of adjectives opposite in the meaning example quite raise here you know quite means a serenity and raise means anger so these two meanings are different from each other such uses of words are called oxymoron next imagery the poet tries to create an image about the tiger in these examples we can see the beautiful images created by the poet the first example is he stalks in his vivid stripes the few steps of his case this creates an image that the tiger is moving to and fro inside his case another example is he should be lurking in the shadow and one more example bearing his white fangs his claws next alliteration it is the repetition of same consonant sound at the beginning of closely connected words remember consonant sounds at the beginning of closely connected words let us see the repetition of consonant sounds first example where plump deer pass here per sound has been repeated next his strength behind bars per sound has been repeated and the last one he hears the last voice at night here her sound has been repeated my dear students in my next video i will discuss questions and answers based on this chapter till then thank you keep watching this video for your enlightenment thank you